now we are executing all kinds of infrastructures and not limited to india so uh, in the past we were executing more than 30% of all the railway infrastructures we got the uh, uh, we needed my status in 2013 and now we have become noratna from 1st may 2023 we have commissioned more than 15500 kilometers of the railway infrastructures and uh, there is a rating given by the department of public enterprises every year and we have been given the rating of excellent for the last 12 years the care rating it has been given we have received the care rating and it is triple a with outlook stable we are involved in the complete project life cycle uh, that is right from the concept to commissioning and uh, we have completed and commissioned more than 140 projects uh, uh, on behalf of ministry of railways and handed over back to the ministry of railways for operations uh, we have also been mandated to constitute project specific spvs and accordingly we have commissioned five number of special purpose vehicles and they have already started paying the revenues and uh, uh, as as on date we have got uh, the orders from the market which is uh, to the extent of 32000 crores plus and uh, uh, the first 6 months uh, the results have been uh, that the turnover has uh, gone up by 8% plus the profit after tax the bottom line has gone up by 21% and for the first time in the history of rvnl that in first 6 months it has crossed the mark of 10000 crores and uh, now since we are we started we have started bidding in the project so the the basket comprises of the different kinds of projects which includes uh, uh, even in the marine sector the the, the metro segments and uh, then the even the irrigation and the municipality section also so uh, this is the brief rvnl and we have got few spvs special purpose vehicles kach rail company krishna padnam rail company bharuch dahej haridaspur angul sukinda and these spvs all spvs have been commissioned and they have generated revenue to the extent of 1 lakh 6000 crores for the railways and in terms of the loading by these spvs ever since they have been commissioned it is more than 840 million tons so we have been contributing uh, a lot uh, through this ppp model and we are the pioneer in uh, uh, constituting and making these special purpose vehicles and uh, we have been also involved uh, in executing the turnkey projects and uh, we have commissioned around 17 number of workshops where the uh, coaches wagons will be manufactured maintained and in time to come you can see that these are being utilized uh, fulfilling the requirement of aatmanirbhar bharat so this is just a brief about rvnl and now we are ready for the questions our first question is from the line of rohit from antique please go ahead thank you thank you for this opportunity uh, so if you could touch upon the current order backlog how much uh, because how far we are from the target of 1 lakh crore 75 to 1 lakh crore as identified in the past which are the big moving uh, 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 ticket items that you are looking for uh, that will be really helpful so uh, so basically uh, if you see the order order book uh, earlier we uh, we started bidding in the year 2021 and the first uh, bids which we got uh, was uh, in the month of september and october and uh, today uh, we are having the uh, orders from the bidding which is approximately 32350 crores and uh, railways uh, order book was around 35000 crores so it is roughly 67 to 70000 crores we do not escalate and update the order book every day or every month uh, uh, but this is the approximate order book uh, we had an ambitious uh, target to achieve the order book of 1 lakh crores we have been uh, doing the turnover of around 20000 crores last year it was 20381 crores and in first 6 months this year it has touched 10000 crores for the first time so we anticipate that uh, the bottom the top line will grow uh, uh, with uh, some lesser rates but uh, the bottom line has grown uh, by uh, around 15 to 20% 
regarding the question of the uh, different kind of baskets uh, see the minister we have got the proven track record of the railway projects and uh, now the preferred segments have been the metro projects the high speed projects the turnkey projects and now we have entered into the manufacturing also so we are going to have all kinds of the projects infrastructure projects and it will not remain limited to the india regarding the bigger projects uh, see the the biggest project which we are executing today is the karnaprayag rishi case project uh, where we are constructing more than the, the total length is around uh, 125 kilometers out of which uh, 84% is uh, uh, the basically tunnels and in last 3 years 125 kilometers tunnels including the escape and the other safety tunnels have been executed by rvnl so this is the landmark project which we are planning to commission by december 2025 then uh, the metro projects uh, uh, the first uh, metro projects which we took from the building from indore so 6.6 km trial uh, were conducted trials were conducted in september 2023 so within one year and few months four five months the trial was conducted successfully uh, and this has become the fastest metro construction in the history of the uh, country so it is a great landmark and margin wise uh, the the profit wise we had received uh, reached almost to the same level slightly better than the margin which we used to get on the nomination basis one of the bigger project is uh, malvi project where we had the order of around uh, uh, 1600 crores and in last 5 months we had done a reclamation of uh, around 20 hectares uh, around uh, uh, 11 lakh mq of uh, drazing so these are some of the important projects and uh, the projects of interest uh, which i thought i should tell you Sure, sir. I really appreciate those comments, uh, sir. My question is more to do with the revised railway policy. That is essentially we are doing away with the nomination clause, and we are uh, looking more for competitive bidding. In that context, how big is the railway opportunity uh, we can foresee? uh because we, we don't see that number being talked about in a big way especially the big ticket projects something like 5000 crore plus kind of railway projects will it go into a conventional bidding route or on a nomination route what is the outlook over there the uh, uh yesterday only we had decided to participate in two number of bids of the eastern dedicated uh, freight corridor uh, which is now being executed by the zonal railway central railway costing around 2000 crores so the opportunities are there in the railway segments we have got the proven track record but since we are in the competition mode uh, we will participate in the different modes and we will try to capture the projects uh, uh, from the railway sector as well as the other sectors got it sir uh, sir the identification of big ticket projects that is from nrp perspective or some yes. other uh, infrastructure pipeline perspective just a minute just a minute, just a minute. Uh, sir rohit i will just add to what my colleague uh, mr rajesh prashad has mentioned uh, uh, sorry i have to uh, interject in between i hope you are able to hear me yes sir definitely sir basic issue is as you said uh, because of this uh, railway policy see earlier also we used to get uh, a, a very comparatively a very less very uh, very very less percentage of the overall projects of railways uh, on nomination basis uh, i mean 80 to 85% of the projects were being executed by zonal railway so uh, we used to uh, our share in the overall projects was around 10 to 15% not more than that so as the infrastructure uh, uh, investment in the infrastructure railways grow definitely uh, uh, that percentage even by bidding will be able to uh, uh, maintain uh, something like that but the the uh, the positive point is now we are going beyond railways also so we are looking at a portfolio where the share of railways Uh, will be uh, maybe 35 per 30 to 35 percent, and 65 percent will be beyond railways, because we are seeing even more opportunities uh, outside the railways. And uh, if I may say so, even after being in railway sector, the ease of execution is uh, much uh, better 
in various infrastructure as compared to even railways. So, with the kind of expertise and all that, we'll be able to deliver uh, not only uh, railway projects, but beyond that, as uh, Mr. Rajesh Prashad has already mentioned about the examples of uh, Maldives and Indoor Metro. So, we have proven our, uh, proven our uh, caliber there. So, what I want to say, the opportunities for us, definitely if railway infrastructure grows, that also uh, will increase our pie in the whole thing. Thank got you. it, sir. Got it. Uh, sir, my second question is on the, uh, one of the big ticket projects that we were looking out for is the Kyrgyzstan project. Uh, yes, I understand what the DPR submission has done, the government is assessing it. Could you throw more color on it, like what is the realistic timeline in which... Yeah, we, we, we continue to be extremely hopeful and uh, uh, there is some internal uh, uh, financial closure and some issues are going on. It has nothing to do with Arminal. Arminal has done its due diligence and already submitted to them. So uh, we, in fact, we are also equally concerned that why it is getting delayed and we are in continuous touch with the government of Kyrgyzstan. Uh, so uh, I cannot give you immediately a particular date, but uh, I can assure you that we are pursuing it very, very vigorously and we hope to, even last uh, week we had a detailed VC on this with them and they have again assured us that this is in final phase, of course. What they are telling in final stage is last, going on for the last two to three months. But sometimes uh, the wheels in the government uh, don't move as uh, we expect. So uh, uh, we continue to be extremely hopeful and uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you. I will get back into the queue for more questions. Right, right. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Nita Mota from Credit Info Edge. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. So, sir, uh, basically we were asking that uh, you had hinted that the margins will remain the same, uh, whereas uh, for this quarter results, what we are seeing is that um, it has gone down below uh, even your EBITDA level, if we see, it has gone five quarters below that level. So, post uh, getting so many orders, uh, could you let us know that what has led to this kind of a performance in this quarter itself, or is it one of a kind? See, uh, uh, this uh, first six months, uh, the margin, the gross margin, if you see, uh, it has increased from 563 crores to 607 crores. I'm talking about the gross margin. And the gross margin upon turnover has, uh, uh, it has increased with respect to the 5.77% of the whole financial year of FY22-23, but it has gone down by 0.04%. The margin, the gross, gross margin upon turnover has been 5.86%. See, what has happened is that uh, uh, one of the, there are various factors these margins. One is the margin which we get from the projects which we execute on behalf of Ministry of Railways, the margin which we get from the building projects, the margins which we get, the, the interest which we get, uh, uh, which we park in the banks and the uh, other financial institutions. Then we get the dividends. So this year, this first six months, the dividends from the Kutch Rail Company has gone down, has not been there. Because of the fact that they had executed in doubling and the electrification project costing around 3,700 crores with the internal resources, which is a, which has done a lot of value addition and in longer term and in time to come, we can see that it will change the dynamics. We are going to have more traffic in that touch rail company limited, number one. Then the O&M cost, the electrification cost vis-a-vis -vis the diesel traction cost it is almost half. Now the entire section is the electrified. So what I wanted to tell you is the very less margin which you are saying, the very uh, less number that is 5.9 to 5.86%. Uh, the dividend is basically contributing 
that uh, that contribution we do not get in the first six months from the cash rail company. So my uh, bookkeeping question to you was that um, in next uh, one year, uh, do you see this margin as you were expecting it to go to a double digit uh, sooner than later? See, earlier the uh, projects were assigned on the nomination basis, then there the margins were fixed. But now the projects which we are taking from the market, uh, see, uh, while uh, we, we are doing the bidding, we do the risk analysis and uh, we allocate the risk factors also. And uh, see, the aim is also to get the order book. And uh, we are keeping uh, sufficient margins available. And I can tell you the first two projects of Indore Metro, uh, which we got in the month of September, October, the margin is uh, more than what we are getting from the nomination basis. Similarly, the first overseas project which we are executing in uh, Maldives, there the margin is also more than uh, the projects which we have, which we used to get uh, from the nomination basis. So overall, what I can say you is that uh, there would be some projects where the margins would be less, but there will definitely be some projects where the margin will be 10% which you are telling. It is only the time and the, the, these projects are challenging. We will have to execute in a challenging mode and we will make sure that the margins are available. Uh, at least uh, uh, whatever we are getting from the nomination basis. Okay. Uh, sir, in the last conference you had hinted at uh, exports increasing as a percentage of your revenue. So with this Maldives project and the others that you were hinting at, uh, what, uh, how can you rate the percentage of success on the bidding and the getting of the orders? Can you uh, just quantify that as a percentage term? And if please tell again. Uh, so the bidding uh, and the uh, getting of the orders, between that can you just quantify the percentage wise that how much have you bid and how much did you get out of it? So, yeah, the strike rate is uh, uh, around 35 to 40 percent, depending on the thing. So, uh, uh, like this year, we have bid, uh, I mean, uh, exact figures, I do not know, but we had reviewed it just a few days back. So, uh, it was around 40 percent is our strike rate. Suppose we quote for 100, we are getting, we got in this particular year around 40. Okay, so would it be uh, comfortable to guess that you will be having a 35 to 40 percent market share on an overall blended basis? Uh, yes, uh, you can say so, but it depends on uh, uh, what, how many projects we will bid. Because we are not bidding for 100 percent whatever is coming. So uh, we are doing a due diligence on which are the projects to be bid and which are not to be bid because we have our strengths. In particular areas, there we are very, very uh, keen on bidding. And there are some areas where we are not comfortable, we are not bidding. But what I can say is, I, I will not speak of market share, but what I can say, whatever we will be bidding, we will, uh, uh, we will uh, work to it that our strike rate remains around 35 to 40 percent. And out of the 70,000 crore order book that you said, sir, so how much of it is from domestic and how much is from exports? Uh, sorry, uh, actually we do not do any exports per se. We have, uh, as of now, uh, we have uh, only one project uh, uh, execution stage. Uh, in execution stage beyond uh, our uh, country, that is in Maldives. Its value is around 1600 crores. So uh, uh, with mar with the uh, variation and all, it may go even up to 2,000 crores. So that is the project as of now. What it is the thing. But I take this opportunity to inform that we are uh, uh, trying to have our footprint in Middle East and Africa, and we are going in a very strong way. There are a lot of very promising projects that are coming up, uh, particularly railway projects in uh, Africa in Botswana, South Africa and other countries. We have established our office there. Similarly, we have established our office in Oman and UAE. So, in time to come, uh, you can see a lot of our projects, a fair share of the projects coming from these areas. 
and parallelly we are trying to look towards vietnam because vietnam is going for uh, railway expansion in a big way and so that will be a, one of our focus area but we are not uh, averse to even uh, participating in projects beyond railway like maldives is a entirely a project which is which was never in our area of uh, nowhere even in the area of our uh, expertise but still we have gone there and performed there thank you sir and all the best for your future right thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder to all participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question uh next question is from the line of ketan jain from spark capital please go ahead yeah hello yeah am i audible sir yeah you are audible yeah uh, so uh, so what would be a bid pipeline like what are the projects you should bid for and uh, what are the projects you are going to bid for uh, can you kindly repeat slightly uh, it was uh, the so maybe request you to use your handset is uh, slightly muffled sir yes 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 is it better now yes sir please go ahead Yes, uh, sir. I would like to know what would be a bid pipeline. Like, what are the projects we've bid for recently, and what are the projects we're looking to bid for? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, I had said in the beginning that uh, the railway infrastructures where we have got the proven record that becomes our the uh, area where we would prefer to execute metro segments. This is a highly technical uh, segment and. Uh, we are technically very competent to execute these kind of projects and we have proved this for the indoor metro so the metro segment is the another segment where we are very comfortable we have entered into the electrical distribution and transmission systems even the municipality in ahmedabad then and in the metro segments the complete project life cycle project a different kind of uh, like the systems the track the depot the electrical system then the complete civil engineering construction so the metro segments the uh, railway infrastructures then all kinds of infrastructures uh, so i understand that i was asking is there anything specific projects which are you looking to bid for currently in the pipeline uh, i said just now in the beginning that uh, yesterday only we were thinking we have already decided to participate uh, in two tenders costing around 2000 crores uh, for the dfcc of uh, Uh, dedicated freight corridor of uh, eastern uh, sector uh, from the mogal sarai to uh, nay from the uh, uh, this uh, gomo to uh, sonnagar so uh, so so we 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 have been working we are uh, basically uh, seeing all the kinds of the tenders which are coming up and uh, then we do we conduct internal meetings we have got a bidding cell then we uh, we do the pre bid engineering so sometimes internally sometimes uh, engaging some consultants and accordingly we work out the dynamics yeah. recently recently we have got three projects awarded uh, in western railway and uh, in uh, central railway so so uh, uh, we are we, uh, we are bidding for railway projects as well as uh, projects beyond that so uh, i'm sure in ta- in uh, time to come uh, we'll have a, a reasonably big order book to execute projects both railways and non railways sir my last question is about uh, road segment uh, 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 are we looking to look are we looking to bid for roads and what is your view on uh, ngi awarding in the next two quarters Uh, see the uh, road segment is uh, is another preferred segment because uh, up to the formation level the railway embankments and the road embankment is same in fact the railway infrastructure projects are much more complicated and uh, the nhi we have got two models one is the basically uh, epc model and the other is uh, the ham model ham model we have participated in few tenders we have also got the orders and for the epc also we have uh, got few orders and uh, uh, see the the projects are uh, challenging because uh, sometimes it is at very remote location and uh, for example uh, the varanasi to kolkata the uh, six laning project uh, it is uh, uh, basically falling in the moist area and uh, 
the land acquisition is uh, is an issue the encroachments the appointed dates sometimes yes the projects get delayed but uh, uh, we are executing we have been uh, uh, getting orders from nhi and uh, this will again remain one of the preferred segments for rbnl in time to come Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Indrajit Chakravarti from Script Trading. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Congratulations for the good set of numbers. Uh, my question is that I read uh, that recently the railways is proposing to expand. the current not expand means widen the current uh, freight corridor and they have uh, earmarked something like 4 lakh crores for this purpose so can you uh, do you have any information regarding it and can you please update on that thank you very much yes uh, presently there are two corridors eastern and the western which are in the implementation phase and which have almost been implemented in next 6 months to 1 year uh, entire project will be completed and commissioned now the next phase they have already started uh, planning and executing some dprs have been prepared for the various corridors and uh, they have handed over this for uh, uh, execution by the zonal railways and accordingly this few tenders have come up and we are participating in those tenders of the dfccis so yes in time to come you will see that large number of tenders coming up for the dfc corridors in the various parts of the country talking 4 lakh crores city or that crores uh, covering the it is in the dpr states and uh, the but dsc states and this state yes 4 lakh crores to so widen the uh, from i think from calcutta to delhi and stuff the certain corridors will be expanded like you know widen so that it becomes very uh, easy you were you were talking about the dfcc corridor na I really don't know the technical term for that. Okay. Maybe okay. I, I I don't know technical. Okay. So so Ministry of Railway is having huge expansion program. They have made a NRP National Rail Plan, and in that particular National Rail Plan, whatever infrastructure is required by the year 2050 should be in place by 2030. So in next seven years, you will be seeing large number of projects coming up. The idea behind this is that the present model share is. uh is approximately uh, uh 26% which has to go up by 45% in the year 2050 so that is a huge opportunity for your company yeah. yes 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 sir so there is there is another concept of the logistic cost the logistics market of the country is uh, uh, to more than 250 billion dollars and uh, if you transport uh, by road and if if you transport by rail then the cost is almost half and the green uh, transport system uh, basically railway is now 100% electrified so and the modal share is equally important if you see the uh, the uh, logistic cost in the country it is uh, 16% of the gdp and in order to compete worldwide it has to come down to 10% so the government of india has come out with a logistic policy 2022 and uh, the model share the railway infrastructure that is why we are getting a lot of trust in implementation and commissioning of the railway infrastructure okay thank you very much thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of shivam kumar gupta who is an investor please go ahead uh, is it my audible yes ha yes Sir, my question is regarding India Middle East Europe Corridor project, sir, which was announced in G20 summit. So, sir, what role RBL can play in developing that project? Please set some light on that, sir. Project, you said Middle East Corridor. No, no. Uh, actually, RBL. Uh, uh, I mean, as far as that Middle East Corridor is concerned, so it will be by uh, financing uh, by different countries, including India. so uh, definitely it is uh, we are looking at it uh, as a huge opportunity for us because it is a sector it is purely railway sector and that is what is our niche area niche area so uh, we are we are very upbeat about it 
Okay, thank you, sir. That's all from Almond side, sir. Thank right. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Uh, next question is from the line of Vishal Perival from IDBA Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, I think in terms of uh, our revenue target for this year, uh, can you provide like, you know, what is the MOU target and what are we targeting uh, in terms of growth rate in FI24? See, uh, uh, we had earlier said that the uh, top line uh, would uh, grow marginally, but the bottom line I had said around 15%. So last year we had a bottom line of 1267 crores. So we expect to be around 1400 crores. The top line we expect this this first six months we have crossed the 10,000 mark for the first time. So maybe 21,000 crores plus. Okay, sure, sir. I mean, uh, uh, will it be uh, I mean uh, available with us the data of uh, the revenue that we have done in first half. Uh, I mean, uh, what is the nomination and what is the bidding uh, uh, bidding project that we have done executed? See, uh, the uh, projects which we had taken from the market, uh, uh, we, it is a very recent phenomenon. You will have to appreciate this. So, okay. the numbers which we are getting is only from Indore Metro. Main, major, major portion is from Indore Metro, then the Maldu project, and most of the projects are from the nomination basis. But in time to come, you will see the reflections of these projects which we have taken from the market and uh, that will uh, be, get, be getting reflected. So the first six months, uh, the majority is from the Indore Metro and the Maldi project. Okay, sure, sir, sure. Sir. And uh, uh, sir, in terms of uh, balance sheet, uh, we have done uh, a capex in first half, and uh, uh, will it be possible to provide uh, some de detail in terms of investments in JV that we have done, and plus, uh, uh, the, at a standalone level, there are capex which you have done, uh, uh, capital advances which is there in uh, cash flow. So this is uh, for what and which, which side of uh, JV uh, we have made this investment? Okay. Uh, this JV is actually, uh, we are have now different type of JV. First is a JV uh, which uh, were purely for railway projects. There we had invested around uh, 1,100 crores. Now we have lot of uh, JVs which are uh, for different purpose like manufacture of Vande Bharat, then different ham projects and uh, one or two JVs for uh, uh, projects uh, which are, uh, I mean not ham but uh, similar projects. So uh, as of now, uh, we, it, okay. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Prashad, uh, my colleague, uh, speak further on. Uh, uh, as far as the uh, typical railway infrastructure projects are concerned, we had ASRL, Ambul Sukinda, Baruj Zahed, Haridaspur, Paradi, Kutch Rail, and Krishna Patnam. So these were the five SPBs which have been com commissioned and the, they are in the operation stage. Then we have got the MMLPs. The concept of MMLP is that we had signed an MOU around two years back for 35 locations and three such MMLPs like Indore Metro, Indore MMLP, Chennai and Bangalore. So the SPVs have been the JV model, the JVs have been created with the NHLML and the local state government uh, agency and there the private participation is not there. Then we have formed Kinet Railway Solutions. Basically uh, there we have got uh, the initially it was a subsidiary now we are holding 25% share in this and it, this particular SPV will be executing the, the Vande Bharat uh, uh, train express. Then we have got the Simla bypass, uh, uh, the JV, uh, then we have got the Kirji Industries, Kirji Rail, uh, RVNL Close Joint Stock Company. Uh, so we have got the large number of uh, SPVs and JVs and uh, uh, the MMLPs uh, are likely to take up shortly. Kenet Railway Solution has already taken up. Energy industry, uh, the JV, uh, the CMB sir has just now said that we are in active uh, discussion with the government there uh, for uh, moving forward. We have already submitted the DPR, etc. So these are some of the details of the SPVs. And if you are having any 
uh, observation against uh, for any particular spv then you can ask no no sir this is helpful helpful sir uh, maybe one last question from my side on on vande bharat a uh, two part question one is uh, the order that uh, we have already received can you give some uh, timeline in terms of uh, uh, when we are supposed to submit the prototype and when the actual uh, uh, i mean like you know uh, we can start uh, manufacturing vande bharat train and second is in terms of uh, opportunity size how big do you see and any timeline that uh, has received you have received from uh, ministry of railway in terms of like you know these many sets will be coming in next 12 months 24 months so that will be helpful sir so the this particular tender was for 120 number of train sets and the uh, bid price was 120 crore per set and uh, these trains were also supposed to be uh, comprehensive maintenance period so they were supposed to be maintained in three depots and the average cost of maintenance was 4% maintenance for 35 years and uh, per year 4% per year of per set per set, per set. and uh, the road map was the submission of bank guarantee which has been done then execution of mcfa that is the manufacturing and maintenance agreement that has been done now the mock up is under the this mock up is to be uh, prepared a 3d model that how this uh, rake will look like then first prototype will be 2 years uh, after this mcfa second prototype will be 24 months plus 2 months and after the prototype uh, these prototypes are approved 12 in first year 18 next year and 25 each after that and the maintenance will be done at bijwasan jodhpur bijwasan is in delhi only jodhpur and bangalore so some some works are also required to be undertaken there so at this stage uh, i we can tell you that uh, the execution of mcma has been done mock up is being prepared and then the prototype will be made at latur the factory which we have constructed uh, the marathwara rail coach factory so presently i will just add to that the presently things are in uh, i mean going very smoothly uh, we have a working group with our partner uh, that is tmh uh, russia um things are uh, moving uh, so prototype although the time is uh, two years but we want to compress it so that uh, earlier we start the production better it will be for us because that will uh, lead to better cash flows also so uh, uh, both of us uh, we and tmh are working uh, very with great synergy in this uh, in this direction Uh, uh, sure, sir. Uh, this is helpful. Uh, the detailed explanation. And, uh, and sir, in terms of opportunity, also. Uh, ah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, that is a very important part. And uh, what you have asked is, I am so thankful to you for asking this. It opens up huge vista of opportunities for us because we want to have a very strong vertical for rolling stock. See. Uh, it can be appreciated that as of now arminal was uh, virtually nil as far as rolling sector uh, rolling stock uh, manufacturing is concerned so this opens up uh, i mean uh, uh, really please don't mind my going overboard on it but a, a flood of opportunities because lot of uh, rolling stock manufacturing is going to come because as the system expands like indian railways is trying to expand other railways are trying to expand so uh, that will automatically lead to huge uh, expansion in the demand for manufacturing so like uh, many countries are now realizing the importance of railways with a with row sector vietnam is trying to open one middle east is going to open one and kindly appreciate some uh, some uh, esteemed investor has asked uh, just now before you about the middle east corridor so even that is rail based so huge matlab we are very upbeat about it and uh, i think it's the right time it's a very very uh, i mean uh, opportune time for us to have got into this manufacturing so uh, it it is a game changer for us as far as opportunities is concerned okay sure sir and in, in terms of uh, uh, new tenders in in vande bharat will this happen after the prototype is submitted or parallelly uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, tenders new tenders will come to the market sir 
No, the, the tenders will happen parallelly because uh, we are going to have a big tender from Mumbai Metro, uh, other metro, uh, and uh, other even Indian railways. So what has happened now? Uh, Arminal has got uh, a huge visibility in this. That uh, the fact that TMH has partnered with Arminal and Arminal being a public sector of uh, Ministry of Railways. Uh, so uh, huge, uh, it has given a huge uh, market presence uh, or market visibility for Arminal. So we have been approached now by uh, various companies uh, like Siemens, Alstom, like uh, some Malaysian uh, manufacturing company. Lot of companies have shown interest to tie up with Arminal. Uh, by uh, just by the fact that we became uh, we were partner in this uh, Vande Bharat Express, so this will go on parallelly. Okay, sure, sir. Uh, I can share. Yesterday also we had a very detailed meeting with Siemens on this. Of course, Siemens have their own rolling stock, but we have told them that uh, we have got uh, uh, alternatives to that so that uh, uh, we can uh, do even more competitive bidding in this case because some of the companies, in, uh, one or two companies in Malaysia, uh, they are very cost competitive even compared to the, the most, uh, Western based, uh, I mean West European uh, companies. Okay, sure sir. Yeah, that's all from my side sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. As there are no further questions, we would like now like to close the call. On behalf of IDBI Capital, thank you for joining the call and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you so much and wish you a very happy Diwali and Tanteras. Thank you.